Consulting has a problem, and we need to talk about it. If you're expecting one of my normal videos where I take you around different bits of my house and film little bits, then uh, this isn't going to be one of those. This is sitting down and talking to you guys honestly about what's going on in consulting right now. Consulting has a big problem, and that's attrition. In the previous video, I talked about the different exit opportunities that exist after a career in consulting. But the thing is, it seems that more people than ever before are actually availing themselves of those opportunities. If you guys have been longer term viewers of this channel, or you know me already, or some of you guys have found me through LinkedIn, then you'll know that I work at Accenture. But I am not talking about Accenture today. I'm talking about consulting as a broader industry. Because I've talked to my friends at Deloitte, EY, PwC, KPMG, and honestly, I see this across the whole board. I really want to talk today about why are so many people leaving consulting right now and how do you know when it is the right time to move on? So let's start with the first question. Why would you leave consulting? Well, there are generally three reasons why you'd want to leave consulting. And they are, you want to focus on a niche or a specialism. You have a significant life change that means you can no longer sustainably work a consulting lifestyle. And the third reason is because some amazing opportunity comes up that you would be bothered to say no to. So let's look at these in more detail. Going down into a niche or a specialism, I mean, it's completely fair enough, right? A consultant specialism is their generalism. We are never branded to be specialists and you might come to consulting to kind of try a few different things, find out what you like, especially if you're still quite early in your career and maybe, hey, you found it and you really know that you just want to spend the rest of your career or certainly the foreseeable part of your career focusing down on that and that's great. But to be honest, you'll always reach a ceiling of how much of that you can do in consulting because it's just not the consulting business model. And so you do see people leaving for that reason. But it's the second one that's the big one that we really want to talk about. And that's shifts that mean consulting no longer suits your lifestyle, because that's such a broad statement. Now, there's the obvious things, like if you become a carer, for example, if you have children, or if you've got to care for a relative, then the consulting lifestyle doesn't particularly lend itself to that. Don't get me wrong. I have seen people... Um, have very successful careers in consulting and make MD and senior MD and, and be having kids or be a single parent and I, I've seen it done and honestly in my eyes these people are true superheroes because I'll be honest I don't have kids or even a pet and I still find it difficult to manage everything at times so how these people do it honestly true true superheroes and absolutely hats off to them but wow these people don't have it easy. It is a tough lifestyle. And there often comes a time when people feel that the sacrifice that consulting asks of us, against the time that you're missing out with your relative or with your children, just isn't worth it anymore. And if you're at that point, then that is the time to start thinking about whether consulting is quite right for you right now. And I see this quite regularly, right? You have kids and then when they're quite young, obviously they need um, lots of things that children do and then so yes this video is about knowing when it's right to quit consulting but I mean it doesn't have to be forever because if you hadn't already worked this out from either anybody else's YouTube channel or this one consulting is a very demanding lifestyle I talked in a previous video about the truth about consulting work-life balance and the reason it's so hard is because you're being pulled in two directions all the time you know what your client needs but you've also got responsibilities to the firm and that's why generally against our colleagues in industry we do tend to work maybe 1.5 and two times 2.5 times harder than than our colleagues out in industry and that like anything will ultimately have its lifespan and it doesn't have to be new humans in your life that makes you question whether the consulting lifestyle is for you maybe you're looking for just generally some more stability in life. One of the reasons that keeps me in consulting is the variety and I really really enjoy that and I need that because I personally 
thrive on being a generalist and I thrive on variety. But the opposite of variety, to some extent, is instability. What I mean by that is, you know that you know, you're going to be on a project for three, six, nine months a year, but you know that the project will come to an end and you're going to have to go and find another one. And for me, I enjoy that. But there are people for whom the prospect of project finishing genuinely brings them anxiety and they need more of that kind of stability and predictability that you get from a career in industry. And honestly, if you're finding that changing your project or your client or your, your role every three, six, nine months is really, really draining you and you're not enjoying the learning that you get from that, then it's time to start questioning, should I look for something else? This brings me to the third part of consulting lifestyle isn't for you point. Because um, if this was a pre-pandemic video, I would be sitting here talking about, well, if you don't either travel or you feel like you don't want to sit in hotels all the time, then, you know, maybe it's time to question it. But really, I mean, let's be honest, um, that time is changing and I don't think it will be like that for quite a while. And in a way, a lot of the extra stuff that made consulting appealing three, four, five years ago has really all been stripped back. You know, the nice meals out, the fancy hotels, the, well, realities it probably often weren't that fancy. But, um, you know, the, the travel, all of that, all of that stuff has really been stripped back. And so the reason why you stay in consulting now is different than, than before. So really when we say it's not for you anymore, really what we mean is, does the actual nature of the work excite you because you can't hide behind the travel the per diems the food the restaurants the this you can't hide behind all of that to lie to yourself that that's why you're staying it absolutely boils down to do you fundamentally enjoy the type of work that we do and that type of work is you know problem solving and it's not easy you know clients often don't fully understand what the pain is so it's really about helping them do that and then doing the solutioning part and do you enjoy that if you take nothing else from this video take this the time that it's right to quit consulting is when you don't enjoy the act of consulting so let's address the elephant in the room why are so many people leaving consulting well we can sit here and say it's because the market's hot because there's very competitive salaries being offered elsewhere etc etc but to be honest, I would say 60% of the people who I know who've quit consulting have not gone to another consulting firm. So I don't think it's fair to say that this is a money or promotion driven movement. Now, this might just be me and if you've had a different experience or you, you know people who've done this differently, then please drop a comment down below because I'm really, really interested to hear it, right? This is not me doing scientific research. This is me just talking to my friends, right? And, and I'm just, just, just sharing that with you guys. Um, it seems to be something more fundamental about what consulting asks of the people in it and how it goes about doing that. Let's not beat around the bush here. These are very challenging economic times and every business is feeling the pressure, right? If it's a, whether it's a small business or a, a big corporation, I know that they are to a greater or lesser extent, but every business is feeling the pressure to uh, increase revenue and not revenue, profit, increase profit in these challenging times. And ultimately that pressure falls back down onto the employees in one way or another. But when you're in consulting, you actually get it from both sides because the client teams put their pressure, outsource their pressure to consulting firms. Meanwhile, the consulting firm is also feeling the pressure, which gets cascaded down to its employees. So you're actually getting twice as much pressure than if you were just in industry, for example. And because of that, it's taking consultants half the amount of time to decide that they don't want twice the amount of pressure. And then they're looking elsewhere and saying, you know what? The market is hot right now. There are plenty of places employing outside of consulting who have fantastic salaries that maybe weren't competitive with consulting salaries before. Now they are and they offer half the pressure. And that is fundamentally why I see people moving out of consulting. 
Now, if you're watching this video thinking, is she talking about this because she's about to do a grand reveal that she's quitting? I'm not. I'm not. I'm sticking around. I, I still enjoy it, you know, fundamentally. The type of work, the, the problem-solving mentality, the people I work with, um, the client, I, I do I do enjoy it, and I, I do. But for me, I'm clear on what the signals are that I want to look out for that red flag if I need to decide whether consulting is still for me in the future. Personally, I think these are quite healthy warning signals, that's why I want to share them with you guys. I've rambled a lot in this video, so let me just wrap up by summarising them. They are, number one, if you have a particular passion or niche that you really want to pursue. Second is if you have a change in your life that means the demands that consulting put on you are asking you to sacrifice things that you're not prepared to do in the long term. For example, seeing your kids grow up, caring for a relative, whatever it is. Finally, it's if you've fallen out of love with the nature of consulting work itself. If you're feeling like any of this, don't hit resign just yet, but certainly take a step back and ask yourself some questions about what you really want to do. It looks like lots of other people in consulting are doing the same. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit different than normal. I'm going to experiment with a few different styles of video coming up. I'm going to try some, some true vlogging style videos as well. So stick around for those. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out. If you have some thoughts or comments on uh, quitting consulting, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Really, really interested in this, this topic. Um, it's a very hot topic right now. And if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.